My name is Truth, the life of Sojourner Truth. My name is Truth, the life of Sojourner Truth by Ann Turner. My mama was a slave woman called Mama. With sweet arms and eyes like a hawk, I had a daddy too, Bomfrey. They loved all 12 of us and had to see us sold off one by one like horses for work. Their hearts most broke. Mama told me to look up at the stars at night shining over my brothers and sisters. We never hardly saw them again. Her heart had 12 holes in it, I know. I got bought for $100 when I was nine. At least they spoke my tongue, Dutch. Next place, I was bigger now, worth $150. They did not speak words I knew. I was always getting beat. Once he fired up a bunch of green sticks in the fire, hardened like stone and beat me until the blood ran. Those marks will never go away. I can feel them like ridges under my dress. Then Master Dumont bought me. He was not so bad but his mistress was evil. They thought my back was a cart for hauling rocks, wood, timber, and grain. I worked hard as a man. Did they ever see me, Isabella, under those loads? Time came, he said. Isabella, you are a good woman. You can go free one year early. But he broke his promise. I determined to leave. I owned myself now. I was not a slave. I spun a hundred pounds of wool to make up for leaving, crept out of the door in the darkness. My baby Sophia clutched in my arms and ran and walked and ran and walked for miles, looking over my shoulder. Would he chase me? Would he not? until God showed me the way to find a kind family that took me in, the baby too. Welcome, they said. Had anyone ever said that word to me before and showed me a fine wide room with white bed to sleep in? I never slept in a bed before. Just let me creep under and it will be like a shelter of leaves. Finally, sleep came to my eyes. Worked for the van and wagons for a few years. Then the terrible news struck my heart like lightning. The evil Dumont mistress sold my son Peter away down south. They are not allowed to do that by law. I marched up to the Dumont house to meet that lady. I want my son back. Give me my son. She laughed. What a lot of fuss over a little colored boy. But I demanded my son back. I felt as tall as a tree inside, courage racing around inside my heart. I got lawyers to help. And finally, Peter came home again his back a mess of scars, his soul too. Frightened of his mama at first, but he came to know me at last. I worked in New York City for a while. Won't spend long on that. Met some bad people, some good ones, but God was leading me east to preach. I left at dawn and God spoke in my heart. A new name that fits me like a new dress made just for me. Now I'm sojourner because I travel far and long to tell the news of God's truth in meetings and gatherings. People like to hear me talk. I think with a name like 
Sojourner Truth, a body has some respect at last. I found a new home in Massachusetts at a silk mill where all men and women were equal. I was happy there, bought a little house, my very first, and preached even more. One night at a camp meeting, there was a bunch of rowdies kicking up a storm. I was afraid they'd come for me, the only colored woman in the crowd. I hid behind a trunk, then my heart spoke. Sojourner, are you weak? Isn't God with you right now? I strode out and climbed onto a wagon back, spoke and sang and preached to those rowdies till they were calm. Something about my voice is like a blanket on a fretful baby. Then at times my voice is like Gabriel's trumpet, firing people up telling them the good news of salvation and the terrible days of slavery. People just can't believe an ex-slave woman can speak truth and power. Once at a rally, a man jumped up and shouted, You must be a man. You are tall as one, powerful as one. You want me to show you I am a woman? I threatened to open my dress but others made him back down in shame. I showed them my truth then. I've told my story to Olive Gilbert, a kind woman at the mill in Northampton. I see all those words creeping across the page as she writes. I never could make sense of writing or reading. I will go on the road again, selling my narrative, Sojourner Truth, and the photographs of me. Those shadow pictures bring in money to feed real women. Sometimes I sit in amazement in some fine living room, remembering I was a slave, working in sweat, beaten, Sleeping on hard floors, now I sleep in a real bed and rally others with fiery words. I think of my daddy and my brothers and sisters like 12 shining stars. I will see them and my own children again someday. Mama will put her sweet arms around me and I will be home at last. Author's note. Who could have predicted that a baby born to slave parents in New York State in 1797 would turn out to be a prophetic preacher who would bring men and women to tears when she spoke born in a Dutch speaking household to mama in Dutch and Bonfrey from tree in Dutch. Isabella was one of 10 to 12 slave children. Most of them sold to different owners by the time she was born. As Isabella, Isabella recounted her own story years later, mama would light a pine torch in the damp cellar of the slave owner's house and tell Isabella about her brothers and sisters now gone. At other times, Mama pointed to the sky and said God lived there. And whenever Isabella was beaten or sad, she could pray to him for help. So during her truth, the name she chose for herself later did so all of her long life. Isabella was sold several times before being bought by the Dumont family, where she stayed for 16 years as she grew into a tall, powerful woman, she said of herself. I have as much muscle as any man, and I can do as much work as any man. I have plowed and reaped and husked and chopped and mowed, and can any man do more than that? Her owner, Mr. Dumont, worked Isabella as hard as a draft horse. 
New York State was set to free its slaves in 1827. But Mr. Dumont promised Isabella he would release her a year early. But when she badly injured her right hand, her owner went back on his promise, saying she could not work as hard. But Isabella did not let that stop her. She escaped with her baby, Sophia, to a couple she knew, the Van Wagdens, who were against slavery. She had to leave her three other children behind, for an escaped slave it would have been impossible to care for all of them. A year after her escape, Isabella learned her five-year-old son Peter had been sold south by the Dumonts, which was against state law. With great determination and the help of the Quakers, she used the court system to get her son back. She was almost unheard of for a former slave at this time. As Isabella said, I know and do what is right better than many big men who read. Many years later, after living and working in New York City, Isabella chose her own name, Sojourner Truth, for she would always travel and she would always tell the truth. Seeking a place to live, she came to the Northampton Association for Education and Industry, a cooperative anti-slavery community in Massachusetts where people lived together and worked in a silk mill. There, she met the abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison, who encouraged Sojourner to bring her anti-slavery message to a wider audience. She also met Olive Gilbert, who wrote down her story in the narrative of Sojourner Truth. Since Sojourner could neither read nor write herself, whenever talking to groups, Sojourner sold copies of her book for 25 cents a piece. With the money earned, she bought her first house in Florence, Massachusetts. At the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in 1851, Sojourner spoke for black freedom and for women's rights. Twelve years after the event, a woman at the conference, Frances Gage, wrote down what she remembered of this speech. This became the famous Ain't I a Woman speech, but that is not how Sojourner talked. Although not educated, she knew her Bible and had a forceful way of speaking, full of concrete images. Though committed to nonviolence, Sojourner saw that the Civil War might be the only way to end slavery. She encouraged black men to enlist in the Union Army and also brought food to a camp of black soldiers in Detroit near her house at the time. After the war, she remained concerned with the fate of former slaves and hoped that they would move west to settle and farm. For most of her remaining years, Sojourner continued to speak her message of freedom and human rights. Few who heard her ever forgot her. She had a powerful deep voice, born from slavery and hardship, developed over the years, grounded in her knowledge of the Bible, and she changed the hearts of men and women when she spoke. As a Detroit newspaper said of Sojourner, she had a heart of gold and a tongue of flame. And here's a picture of her.